One of the many strengths of Capture One is that you could customize the workspace to have it fit your needs, style, and habits. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could go about doing that so you could really make the workspace work for you. Before I do that though, I just want to ask a favor. Many of you know, all my videos are free. I'm not one of those YouTubers that does so many free videos and then I have some more advanced courses that I charge for. I prefer to have all my videos free. In doing so, I do need your help. The easiest way you could help is if you share and like the video. Also, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to go beyond that, if you're interested in purchasing Capture One, if you look in the description below this video, you'll notice that I am an affiliate for Capture One. If you use my affiliate link, I will make a commission on your purchase. And of course, it doesn't cost you anything extra when you do that. Other ways you could help me will be listed below in the description of this video as well. And I would appreciate any help you could give. Uh, I would really appreciate it. It really helps me improve my videos and helps me make more videos. Also, I should add real quick that uh, whenever I'm doing a video where I'm showing some of my images, in the description below the video, you'll see all the gear info, exposure info, and camera settings for that shot and a lot of people are interested in like where I focused, what exposure mode I was in and things like that. So you could check that out as well in the description below the video. Now, let's start, let's customize the workspace. Now, by default, the Capture One workspace looks like this. On the left, we have the tools and the tool tabs. In the middle, we have the uh, viewer. In the right, we have the browser. And along the top, we have the toolbar and cursor tools. Now you could kind of rearrange this all you want. Also, there are some pre-configured uh, workspaces in Capture One. If you go up to Window and you go to Workspace, you could see below that that we have a simplified workspace. So if I click on this, you could see that it changes the tools over here on the left-hand side. There's not as many, so it's simplified. Um, if you want to go back to the original default workspace, very easy to do, just click on default. So don't worry, you could go in here and move things all around and rearrange things and change the tools in different tabs. And if you ever wanna go back to the way it was when you first purchased it, just go to workspace, default. But really the real strength is really customizing this the way you'd like it. Now a lot of people I've talked to find it's hard to get used to for instance, the tools on the left. They're used to, I guess, working in Lightroom where the uh, controls and the adjustments are all on the right. And you could change all this around. So on the right-hand side right now, we have the browser. So if we go up to View and we go down here to Browser, you'll see that Customize Browser. And right now, because the tools are on the left, we can't put it there, but we can put it below. So we'll click Place Below. And you'll see now the browser is along the bottom, so that's more like the film strip in Lightroom. Now we have this right panel open. There's nothing there. And if you really want to kind of imitate Lightroom, you could move these tools over to the right panel. So you, what you would do is you would go up to View, and then you would go down to Tools, Customize Tools, Place Right. And you'll now have them over there. So it's a little more like Lightroom setup, if that's what you want. Now personally, I don't want the browser at the bottom. I prefer it on the left uh, because you'll notice once I put it on the left, the image, the, the actual viewer is larger and I like to see more of my image. So I'll go up to view and I'll go down to the customized browser again. Now you'll see that it says place left because nothing is there. I could put it there. So I'll place it left. Now beyond that, I also would like to make it a little bit bigger. So I could go here and see how we have that. Uh, right when we get between, we turn into that like double horizontal arrow. I could drag it out and make those a little larger. And once I get out bigger, they start doubling up. I also could control that behavior up here um, at the uh, top of the uh, browser is right, uh, this little plus magnifier. And I could change the behavior there of how they, uh, they line up. So I kind of like that, but there's one other thing. I don't need them there all the time. So I'd like those to automatically hide. 
So I'm going to go up to the view and down to the customize browser again, and I'm going to go to auto hide mode. Now my viewer is very large. I get a lot of image there. And if I just go to the left, you'll see the, the browser pops out and that's the behavior I want. Now, some other things I'd like to do. Um, I often, often make variants. Uh, those of you not familiar with Capture One, but are familiar with Light One, a variant is kind of like a virtual copy. I often like to process an image one way and then take that same exact raw file, but process it a different way. Often I do one in color and one in black and white just to see which way one I like better. And I will use a variants for that. Now to create a variant, you could use a keyboard shortcut or most often you go up to the top menu. Well, I'd like that to be up here, right at the top. So if I want to edit the top toolbar, just right click on the toolbar and go to customize toolbar. And you'll see you have this now, and I could remove things from up here. I could add things up there, whatever it takes. And you'll notice one of the choices is variance. So I'm gonna click on that and just drag it up and I could place it on the right, the left. I think I'm gonna put it on the right and just set it there. So there it is. And that's really all I want to do. But you could see all the different things you could add to the toolbar. And if there's something you added you want to take away, just drag it off the toolbar. You also notice you could change it from icon and text to icons only to text only. And I, I prefer icon only. And so I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to click done. So now I have my the variants there. Now, the other thing I want to do is I find I use the same tools over and over again uh, for my images. And when I do that, I have to jump around between the various tool tabs. Well, I'm going to create a custom tool tab that just has all the tools I most often use for color photography. And that's, you know, I'll make another tool, I'll make, or tool tab, I'm sorry, for my black and white images. That way, it just will streamline my workflow. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna right click on the tool tab area here and go down to add tool tab. And then we have some pre-configured ones, but I'm gonna go all the way down here to custom tool tab right there. And now I'm gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call this uh, my color workflow because this is my workflow for color images. So I'm gonna click, and also I could choose the icon, you know, numbers from one through nine, or we have these little icons down here. Um, there's nothing there that I see that designates or looks like it would be like designating color. So I'm just gonna stay with one and I'm gonna add the tab. And you'll notice now it kind of added it off. So what I have to do is I make this just a little bigger and there it is. So it's, again, you just, click on that right in that middle there when the cursor turns into the double arrow. So there it is. There's nothing in it though. So I'm going to click and I'm going to go to add tool. Now I'm going to add the tools in the or roughly the order that I usually do things. Uh, one tool I, I like to use first is base characteristics because with base characteristics I could choose the profile or in Fuji calls them you know a uh, film simulations, but they're actually camera profiles. And I like to do that right away. Um, now, mo those of you that watch my other videos go, Tony, you always say you like to crop first. Well, the crop tool is up here at the top. I could, there is a crop option I could put here, but it's right here at the top, crop and straighten. So I could leave that up there. I don't need to put it over here on the right. You may differ. You may want it on the right as well, but that's fine. After I choose the profile, the next thing I like is white balance. So I'm going to go to add tool and I'm going to go to white balance. So there's the white balance. Now I'm going to, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to bore you with this. So I'm going to go to add tool and I'm going to um, add exposure. All right. This is the kind of the order I like doing things in. I'm going to add tool and I'm going to go to high dynamic range. And then I'm right click again, add tool, and I'm going to go to levels. And then I like doing noise reduction, add tool. And again, this isn't, there's no right or wrong way to do this. 
you could do this any way you like, in any order you like. This is the way I typically would like to do it. And even doing it this way, um, I still could jump around. I could still jump to other tabs. Also, just because I put, let's say, exposure and high dynamic range here, they're still over here in the exposure tab. So there they are. You could have uh, tools in more than one tab. You don't have to uh, worry about uh, the, taking them away or you know losing them from one tab to another. So next to that, I like to do uh, curves. And then I like to do the color editor next. And then I like to do sharpening. Then I like to do vignetting, get near the end. And one tool I'm going to add at the end, I don't use all the time, is I'm going to add tool, is going to be keystone. Uh, a lot of times I do some architecture shots and I need to uh, do some keystone uh, adjustments with that. So I'll add that at the very end, even though I might do that actually earlier in my workflow. So uh, here are all the tabs and I could close them down. Now, uh, this is my custom tab for color um, adjustments and I think it will work great. Another thing you could do is you could pull this right out. You put it over here. So a lot of times people like to adjust white balance specifically and have it right on the image so they could really just micro adjust the slider and look at the image without having to look to the right. Uh, so you could do that as well with any of these. You could you know pull them out and put them where you want over here, then drag them back. I could rearrange things if I think, well, you know what, my noise reduction, maybe I should do that even earlier in my workflow. I could just move it up if I wanted to. Uh, so you could rearrange any of the tabs. You could double up tabs. Um, you could move them over on the image, anything you like, but you could see I have it there. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with uh, this now, but this is my color tab. I will make a black and white workflow as well, where I'll have uh, the adjustments in the order I usually do them uh, for black and white images. So as you could see, uh, you really could customize the workspace uh, tremendously, uh, a lot here. Now, if for some reason, um, my son, let's say, who is um, an amateur photographer, an enthusiast, if he wants to use Capture One, we could set up his own workspace for him. Now, what I would do is I would give mine a name. So I will go to Window, Workspace, Save Workspace, and I will call this Anthony's Color uh, Workspace, I guess. that's. I know I'm just going to call it Workspace, like that. So Anthony's Workspace, just like that. So that's there. Now, my son might not like to work uh, with this workspace. And you can see it's right down here. He may prefer the default workspace. So we'll click on that. And you can see it just rearranged everything back to the way it uh, was right when you first installed Capture One on your computer. And then when I come in and I want to do work on it, I could go back to my workspace. As simple as that. I mean... That is awesome. And then you can see the auto hide of the browser on the right. And I'm good to go. So that's it. I just wanted to show you some of the tricks and things you could do to really customize the workspace and make it work for you and make it fit your needs, your style, the habits that you're used to doing. And then um, hopefully it will help you better, more efficiently process your images. Now in our next episode, I'm going to introduce layers. We're going to process this image and I'm going to do some dodging and burning on this image. So look for that in our next video. And I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>